Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Glad to have you here this morning. You want to take a minute to greet your fellow believers in Christ around you? Now would be a good time to do that. Opposition to being followers of Christ claiming his message to be lights out in the world. The prophet Ezekiel experienced that. The apostle Paul experienced it. Even Christ our Lord himself, as he came to his hometown, experienced basically complete rejection by the people of his hometown. And yet the scripture readings this morning just going to encourage, whether it's Ezekiel or Paul encouraging young Timothy, continue, be faithful. God will give you the strength. Same encouragement that we need to faithfully live our lives as God's children. Order of worship. Everything printed out in our worship folder for us this morning. Opening him, either 895 or it's printed right in your worship folder.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins then. Holy God, gracious Father, I, sinful my nature, and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. For us to give him my pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a false servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world. For the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. 
almighty, eternal, and righteous God. You revealed your divine word to teach us what we should do and what we should avoid. Strengthen and lead us by your Holy Spirit, that we serve you in new obedience here, until we come to complete holiness before you in the life of God. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Opposition. The prophet Ezekiel experienced that. And the Lord sent the Holy Spirit to Ezekiel to encourage him in his ministry. He remained faithful. The second chapter of Ezekiel, verse 7 verses. The Lord said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. The Spirit entered into me as he spoke to me and brought me up to my feet. Then I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to disloyal nations who have been disloyal to me. They and their fathers have rebelled against me to this very day. These children lie on a brazen face and heart heart. I am sending you to them, and you are to tell them that this is what the Lord God says. Then, whether they listen or do not listen, for they are a rebellious house, then they will know that a prophet is fed among them. But you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, and do not be afraid of their words. Even though briars and thorns surround you, and you are living with scorpions, do not be afraid of their words, and do not be intimidated by the look on their faces, for they are a rebellious house. You are to speak my words to them, whether they listen or they do not. For they are rebellious. The word of the Lord. The 27th of the Psalms.
gospel encourages Timothy that even in the midst of that opposition, he faith continue to preach the word. So Paul writes in the second letter to Timothy, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and trust the things you heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, the faithful men who will also be able to teach others. Share hardships as a good soldier in Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in the affairs of everyday life. If he does, he will not please the one who enlists him. Also, if someone competes as an athlete, he does not receive a crown unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should receive a share of the crown's work. Think about what I am saying. Because the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, a descendant of David, in accordance with my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. For this reason, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, so that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, along with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. Indeed, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, because he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. We rise to prepare for hearing the reading of God's name.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance. For our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose love, mercy, and forgiveness will persist for each and every one of us until the day he calls us home to himself. Remember those infomercials on TV, that item that could slice, it could dice, it could julienne, it could do everything. And people got hooked and buy it. And then when it got delivered, they opened up the box, and when they tried it, they were tremendously disappointed. It didn't turn out to be what they had expected it to be at all. I find that once in a while, when I'm used to hearing a voice on the radio, and when I get to see a picture of them finally, it's not what I expect them to be. In my mind, that guy doesn't have a beard, but I guess he does. That lady, she was tall with short hair. No, she's short with long hair. We don't always get what we expect. That is the case with the people in Jesus' hometown. They knew Jesus. He had grown up among them. They had seen him as a little child running through the streets playing with his friends. They had seen him grown up standing side by side, working side by side with his dad in the carpenter shop. They knew his family. They had certain expectations of him. Sadly, we find out that what they expected was not what Jesus came to give them. Oh, they had heard about the mighty things that Jesus had done. The first of the very miracles that Jesus had performed, turning some water into wine. When you stand on the hill of Nazareth, you can look into the distance and you can see the little village of Cana. You've got to believe the news made its way back those few miles. They have heard about that and who knows how many other miracles that Jesus had performed. And did you catch it? They weren't even able to use his name. Where did this man get these words? Where did this man get the power to perform these miracles? Well, with the people of Nazareth, we're going to find out. And what you and I need to remember at times also, with Jesus, we don't always get what we expect. We're going to see some amazing rejection by the people of his hometown. We're also going to see some amazing persistence by our Lord in continuing to carry out his mission as Lord, as Savior, as Messiah, as Redeemer, no matter what the opposition around him came to be. And that opposition came to be great, didn't it? It wasn't just the people of his own town. But the people of his own flesh and blood, his own nation. The nation that God had chosen out of all the nations of the world through which one day he was going to send the Messiah. Jesus, their flesh and blood, the fulfillment of absolutely everything that the Old Testament had said about him. And not only did people just close their ears to what he had to say, it turned into hatred. And ultimately, his death. With Jesus, they didn't get what they were expecting. Whether they were hoping for some sort of a political asylum that would deliver them from the Romans and return them to the grandeur under King David and Solomon, or whether they were expecting someone who would just be their sugar daddy. Someone who would feed not just 5,000, but would 
be able to snap his fingers and provide them with absolutely everything that they wanted so that they didn't have a care in the world. But that's not the Messiah that Jesus came to be. And so Mark tells us that here in Nazareth, the people of his hometown put offense at him. In the original language, that's a word that just doesn't mean they got a little irritated with him, but that Jesus was highfalutin, holding his nose down on them. No, this is a word means that they stumbled in whatever faith they could have had. It was a complete rejection of what Jesus had to say. A rejection of the plain miracles that he had done. Miracles, of course, which were only intended really to do two things. The first, to take care of some person's frailty, the sickness, the disease, making like last week raising giants from the dead. But ultimately, the greatest purpose of every one of Jesus' miracles was to get people to listen to what he had to say. What Jesus had to say that Sabbath day as he went into the synagogue in his old town was not what the people expected or wanted to hear. And while Mark doesn't detail for us what Jesus' sermon was, you got to believe that it was the exact same thing Jesus always taught about. He began with the call to repentance. A reminder to people of their sinfulness, their need for a Savior, how far short they fell of the absolute perfection that God had demanded of them. That was the last thing these Jews wanted to hear. They prided themselves on being the physical descendants of those patriarchs of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They said, that was their ticket to heaven. And so to be called to repentance, how dare Jesus? And then, of course, he would point to himself. I'm the solution to your sin, to your guilt, to your shame. I've come here to be your substitute, to lay down my life, a holy, perfect life. I'm going to credit to you a holy, perfect life that's going to be offered up on Calvary's cross, in which my blood is going to be shed, and the sins of the entire world are going to be washed away. Well, that's not what they wanted to hear from Jesus either about who he was. We know this guy. Isn't he the carpenter's son, the son of Mary? Aren't his sisters and brothers, James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, aren't they still here with us? How dare this local boy make these claims about himself? And so they were amazed and Jesus had to hold that at him. Only in his own town, Jesus said, among his own friends and relatives, and in his own house as a prophet without honor. People who had known Jesus their entire lives and rejected him. Unless we wag our fingers at those people of Nazareth and the entire Jewish nation of Jesus' day, we're not paying attention to who Jesus was. We're not always expecting what he really was. We maybe need to do a little checking, a little fact checking in our own lives. Because sometimes Jesus comes to us in ways that we don't always expect or want. A call to repent? Me? Jesus expects me to repent? Oh, I can hold my nose high. Oh, lots of sinners that I know. Oh, God's not going to help me. How hard it is to take the plank out of my own eye. To see clearly to take this back on somebody else's. All to repentance, Jesus, that's not what I expect you to talk about. 
For Jesus who said, Remember that good Friday? As I left the pilot's courtroom? Remember what I was carrying on the Via Dolorosa, the road to Calvary? I was carrying a cross. I carried that cross until I was no longer physically able to carry it. But I carried that cross for you. And then Jesus comes along and what does he say? If you really come after me, you must take up your own cross and follow me. A cross, Jesus? We're your children, dearly loved. We're sitting here in church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. We're your redeemed people. And now you say you're going to allow trials and troubles and hardships to come into our life? Jesus, that's not what I expected, how you're going to treat me. But it's exactly what you and I need from our Savior, Jesus. That call to repentance, pointing to his cross as our only hope of salvation, reminding us to have not such a short view of life, of only what goes on for our 50, 60, 80, 90 years in this world, but to look at life through an eternity that God has planned for us. That's what Jesus gives us exactly what we need to keep us closer to him. To remind us of our great need for him. A little interesting that it says because of their rejection in Nazareth. Jesus was not able to do many miracles there except lay his hands on a few people and heal them. No, it's not that Jesus had suddenly lost his divine power to do miracles. The people who rejected him, the very purpose for miracles to draw people's attention to listening to what Jesus had to say. That was gone. And yet, as he was able, he laid his hands on a few people and healed them. And let's not skip over the last verse of this section of scripture. Jesus went around after he was rejected, teaching from village to village. Jesus was not going to give up because there was some opposition, even from his own people. He knew the cross lay before him. And he knew that that was going to result in glory for himself and for his heavenly Father, as the mission of redemption would have been carried out perfectly by Jesus, an innocent death and a glorious resurrection. He persisted. Not only in preaching and teaching, but in doing absolutely everything that was necessary to save you and me. And that again is where I think we need to be a little careful in Satan's temptations to us. Like these people of Nazareth who have known Jesus their entire life. That can describe us too, can't it? The vast, vast majority. We've known Jesus our entire life, right? I got to know Jesus. And I don't even remember it. I was sitting on my mother's knee, my father's lap. They were reading to me Bible stories from the children's Bible story book. And I didn't understand the words yet. I went to Sunday school, Christian day school, a little for high school, a little for college, seminary. I've known Jesus my entire life. And I think I've got him figured out. I think I've got him figured out what he owes me. Oh, but Jesus doesn't give me what I expect from him all of this. He humbles me and lays his crosses upon me as he does on every single one of us in different ways and in varying degrees. All because Jesus persists in his love for you and for me. Nothing is going to stand in his way. 
coming to me, a you. In his usual humble ways. Powerful word that's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. The one combined with God's word poured over the head of the baby. And faith is created. A little piece of brown bread, a wafer, a little sweet wine. And Jesus says, well, That's my body and my blood. That's your guarantee of your sins forgiven. That's your guarantee that you have a life is yours. That's what you and I need to come to expect from Jesus. The persistence of his love for sinners like you. No, Jesus may not always give us exactly what we expect. But Jesus always does give us exactly what we need. We that peace of God that surpasses our understanding that He hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. On page 9, the Apostles' Creed, our confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son of Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into hell, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints. The forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated for the prayers of the church. <laughs> o Lord, our light, salvation, and struggle. Keep us safe in your dwelling and hide us in the shelter of your protection. We seek your face, Lord. Lord. Give us strength for the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Help us to live and serve as your faithful soldiers. We seek your face, Lord. Lord. Your word, oh Lord, is not changed. Let it have three force in the nations of the world. Free those who are held in the chains of sin and evil. Bring them to faith in your living word. We seek your face, Lord. We are our God, 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 God. Almighty God, you are the ruler of all peoples on earth. Forgive our shortcomings as a nation. Purify our hearts to know and love your and give wisdom to our leaders. Preserve your gifts of freedom, righteousness, and truth among us. We seek your face, Lord. Lord, maintain righteous government everywhere, so that all things may take place in an orderly way, and peace may be kept, for the good of your people and for the spread of the gospel. We seek your face, Lord. Lord. Help us to endure everything for your sake. Give strength in Christ to those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Hold before us the promise of goal that we will receive the victors crowned by your grace. We seek your face, Lord. Lord. Of special opportunities we have to bring the concerns and joys of God's people to His throne of grace and mercy. The Lord called Robert Matthews home to heaven, gave him his crown of life. His Christian funeral service held this coming Thursday here at church. 
We rejoice together with Scott and Kelly Whitney because they're celebrating their 21st wedding anniversary. We include Peter Trafka and his family in our prayers as he's dealing with some health issues. We pray for his healing and his recovery. And again, we pray for Crystal Rosh, for strength for the family in that horrible experience that they are having. And then finally, you may have heard of that horrible house fire over by the Cedar, in which six people died. One of those was one of our missionaries to Thailand. It was Pastor Steve Whitty and his family. Two of his daughters and three of his granddaughters were killed in that fire. Mrs. Whitty was still back in Thailand yet. So she is still back in Thailand trying to deal with that horrible tragedy in her life along with all the other members of her family and members of our city. And so we take God's throne of grace and mercy for many families. So you can. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for those who mourn the earthly death of Robert Matthews, reminding them that death is but a sleep. That on the last day our Lord Jesus will come and he will raise from his body and restore him, body and soul, and take him to his eternal Lord of heaven. Comfort them with that title, that this time of sorrow in their life, with that sure promise that you are the resurrection and the life, that whoever believes in you does not perish, but gains eternal life. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, for 21 years you have blessed God and Kelly Whitney with your love. You have been the third partner of their marriage. And you have shown them how to freely and sacrificially show their love for one another. Continue to be with them in the future, Lord, as you have in the past. With the promise that as every joy and sorrow comes into their life, you continue to bring them closer to each other. Lord, Heavenly Father, we place Peter Traffic in your hands as he is looking for healing and recovery from some health issues. Lord, remind him that you are that great physician of body and soul, that you always work everything out for our eternal good. If these trials, Lord, should continue in his life, give him strength to bear up under them, and if it is your will to be Give him reason to bring you thanks and joy and praise. It's the reason also, Lord, that we continue to bring to you the family of Crystal Rush. For, oh, Lord, you are our strength, our rock, our hope, our salvation. Upon you, our only hope is founded. Lord, we pray that the family of Crystal finds that hope and comfort within their hearts as you deliver it to them through your word and your promises that you would tell us, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And then, Heavenly Father, through the scriptures, you tell us, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in the grace. Lord, we pray for that strength in this time of earthly weakness, for the family, the missionary Biddy, and all of his family members. Lord, we struggle in this world to understand why these tragedies take place. And yet at the same time, Lord, we are able to rejoice that all of them have now received that crown of eternal life. That they will be there waiting for us when you call us to our eternal life. Until that day, Lord, remind them that you still are a good shepherd who leads them beside quiet waters, and who alone can restore their souls. All these things we ask in your loving name, Lord Jesus. Let me take a moment, Lord, asking that you hear our own personal and our private petitions, things that may be weighing heavy upon our hearts, spiritual needs for which we ask of you, and blessings for which we bring you our thanks. And so we pray quietly.
Father of mercies and God of all comforts, come to our help and deliver us from all difficulties. Take away from us all fear, anxiety, and stress. Help us faith and endure all things with faith, courage, and wisdom. You are our rock and refuge, our comfort and hope, our delight and joy. Bless is your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Continue with your now.
Spend some time with your fellow believers here at St. Stephen's. With that, have a blessed week. <laughs>